Hello there and welcome to a brand new video on our channel. Well, today we're doing something completely different actually. We're not talking about the Lion King or anything or about Minecraft shows in my kind of way. This is actually a mod tutorial, a mod showcase. We're talking about the theatrical mod. It's been a while and there is no tutorial or guide or anything yet. So I'm here to cover up all the important features, all the things that you need to know about this mod. As you saw, the intro show was already something that you can do with this mod. It's pretty insane. I personally discovered the mod a few weeks ago and had basically no clue what to do. Like, not at all. So I reached out to Rashmeet a few weeks ago and basically just asked him how it worked and if I should do a tutorial on this because I'm very interested in light systems, etc. I'm very interested in this kind of way in Minecraft. And basically my whole channel is about Minecraft shows and so I thought this would be quite fitting because there are already a lot of people who watch these videos because of Minecraft shows and now we have a very interesting mod that makes the version 1.16 a little bit more interesting for me to be honest. So please note that I'm just an interested fan of the whole project and not the author or developer of this whole mod. So I can help you with basic troubleshooting in the comments, but don't report any bugs or stuff like that to me, because I'm not the one who's working on the mod. There's a link to the theatrical mod discord and to the official github of the mod. So yeah, first of all, you can download this map in the description if you want to follow this tutorial step by step in the same world. Can be quite useful, but you can also obviously use your own world. It doesn't matter. But yeah, you can use it for all kind of tests. Um, and second of all, it's a Forge based mod, so you need to install Forge 1.16.3. In addition to that, you also need the theatrical mod, and the theatrical mod needs some sort of power source. So you need a power mod. Uh, I'm using power because it's basically the mod that the developer used in his little showcase for, for us. So yeah, um, I'm using power and lollipop because power needs the mod lollipop. I don't know why, but yeah. So. For this whole thing you need Forge 1.16.3, Theatrical Mod, Power Mod and Lollipop Mod. All of them are in the description and also this map as I said. Well, let's start with the basics. I will first show you all the different items and stuff like that and how to properly place them and then use them. After that we will um, have a look at in-game controlling of the lights, so how to control the lights in Minecraft. And 
Later in the video, it will be a little bit more advanced. So um, I will show you how to use external software to do your own light shows. Because, spoiler alert, the opening show that you just saw was not made with the in-game light controller like here. It was actually made with the real light software. So yeah, let's start with the basics. Let's talk about the generic light and after that let's talk about the moving light. Because there are two types of lights in here. A few types of control stuff, a few types of cables. Let's start with the lights. Um, yeah, we have the generic light. It's pretty much just, as the name already says, a generic light that can fire up one beam in one direction, give one light source and in one spot you can change the position of it with this. Um, but we'll cover the basic setup uh, in a minute, so yeah. And we also have the moving lights obviously, so you can change color, focus, position and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty amazing what you can do with these little things. <laughs> and yeah, um, next thing we should cover up is the cables. There are three types of cables in the whole mod. We have a basic DMX cable, which is basically the way to control the lights. We have a soccer pack, soccer packs cable, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, which is basically one cable for different power sources or different like multiple power sources. And we have a simple power cable. In the power mod, there's also the energy cable. It's the energy cable basic. It can be quite interesting, um, but more of that in a few minutes. All right. Before I forget, we don't only have generic light and moving light, we also have the DMX redstone interface, which basically gives you the opportunity to control redstone signals within a controller or light software. We have the Sokapex distro and the dimmer rack. Um, how to use them is basically not important right now. I will show it in a few minutes, just as all the other stuff. But um, first of all, it's used to control generic lights. Yes. We have three different kind of light control systems, basically. We have the ArtNet interface, we have the test team X block, and we have the basic lighting desk. The test team X block will just send out random signals to test your lights. The basic lighting desk, as you can see here, is really much a basic thing to control a few lights. It can be useful if you just want to use these light for uh, ambient or just for fun in the background. If you want to do real shows, you will need to use the ArtNet interface, as you can see here. This is the more advanced stuff. We will come to that later. Let's just start with basic setup. So what we need is the generic light. The, we need the IWB. We need a DMX cable, Sokapex cable, power cable. We need Sokapex distro, Dimarek, and we also need... What do we need? We need... Uh, a power source. We need energy cell. I'm using the creative energy cell. You can also build crazy reactor stuff and use them. But in our case, we just use the creative energy cell, which gives, gives us unlimited power. Let's just position the generic light somewhere like this. To use the light, we need to connect this to a power cable. Oh, let's do it on this side. Bring it to the floor, actually. And we need to connect it to the Sokapex distro. Connect it to one of the blue dots, not to the green dot, because the green dot is only for Sokapex, Sokapex cables. Okay, next thing we need to have is a dimmer rack. We need to connect those two. The dimmer rack needs power, so give it a little bit of power. And between the controller and the dimmer rack, we need to have some DMX cables. Looks a little bit crappy right now, but yeah, that's basically the speed, how to split it up from the controller to the dimmer rack with DMX, split it up with soccer packs, no, with, with the soccer packs distro and bring it to the different lamps. Um, that's the setup for the generic lights. Let's quickly do this for the moving lights. It's pretty easy. That's why I'm doing this now. Um, you just put the moving light, light wherever you want. You can also put the moving lights on the ground. I wouldn't recommend to do this with the generic lights because, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit weird. So, DMX cable connected, connected to the controller. Oh, like this or whatever. And um, power the moving it up like this. 
that's basically it. You can also use these kind of cables to a second to do something like this. If you have like multiple moving heads, you can easily do stuff like that and you have two moving heads connected. So yeah, that's how to use the power stuff. Let's just stick to the classic way and put a giant energy cell behind the moving head. Now you have set up uh, the generic light and the moving light. How to set up the uh, DMX interface is pretty easy. It's just putting this over there and connect it, connect it to, the, to the controller and that's it. Now we basically connected generic light, moving light and um, the DMX redstone interface. Let's quickly cover up all the functions. First of all, in this case, you need to do it manually. You need to give it the position you want and it's a little bit hard to see it with the GUI opened. So therefore we have this remote light position. You right click the lamp and then you just go wherever the lamp needs to be. For example here. If you think the light should be here, shift right click and the light is positioned on that spot. Yeah, so a common mistake that people do is basically want to control they want to control the lights right now they think okay let's try it out let's just activate all of them hmm, nothing happens that's sad mod is not working let's uninstall the mod and buy no what you need to do is you need to connect the different dmx addresses to outputs in the dimmer rack so what i'm usually doing is putting the one one two two three three four to the four five to the five and six to the six. Now that this is sorted out, we can actually go to the controller and have a look. We need to figure out which channel the light is. In this case, it's actually the last one, I guess. If you want to another, add another generic light, you can't just put it like this, it won't work. You need to add another connection like this, put it up here. It looks a little bit weird now but yeah that's how it works and now we need to find the another channel maybe it's five nope it's four yeah it's four so now we have channel four and six those are the two lamps you have like channel three and two and one over here it's possible to do this in a little bit yeah more nice way this is the best way i could come up with so yeah before we go to the um, moving light let's quickly show you this section over here the program mode and the run mode if you're actually planning to only work with the in-game stuff you will need this create a little show for example activate the first lamp and go on q1 go to the next step activate the second lamp go next step activate the first one again go activate this one again Go. You can now switch between the scenes. You could say that you can sort of program a few simple scenes uh, in that way, but yeah, it's still a very basic light controller. And yeah, if you really want to use this mod, you should consider using the Artnet. But um, yeah, let's cover this in a minute or so. Um, let's go to the moving light. Um, it's pretty similar. The first one is the intensity, red, green, blue, the focus, the pan, tilt. Let's just um, move the moving head to the front, activate the light like this. Now we have the moving head on some sort of spot. You can change the focus as you can see. You can change the pan and tilt and you can actually, yeah, that's the moving light. And last but not least, the redstone interface. The DMX interface allows you to send out redstone signals via DMX. So basically what you need to do is you change the value a little bit and it goes more and more up. As you can see now all the four lamps are turned off. If I go to like this, you can see that the lamps slowly turn off because the signal is just too, too weak. That's how it works can be pretty amazing, especially when you're like creating your own theater, stuff like that, and want to use your moving set pieces within the DMX software. You can actually move the set pieces 
up and down from left to right or whatever um yeah with this mod it's pretty nice or like turn on or off all the um the theater lights and stuff like that it's it's cool it's very very cool let's quickly cover up the whole dmx stuff so during this whole progress i i said the dmx uh, very often so dmx is basically the language or the way to communicate with lights to uh, control lights on concerts and theaters uh, festivals wherever you have like professional event industry lights and stuff like that you're using dmx software or hardware just so that you heard it once um yeah normally you can change the dmx value for example here at this point there's a little bug in the mod it will be fixed within the next weeks i guess so that you can actually change the dmx value um same is same goes for the dmx interface you can't change the dmx value at the moment but you can change it for the moving edge that's good <laughs> so if you change it to for example yeah, let's change it to one you can see that now not channel zero is the beginning but channel one is the beginning so in the dmx universe you have 512 channels in this little controller you have 12 channels if you want to cover this whole up as a full universe you would need to have well 512 signal faders we now can start the controlling here and not here anymore if you have a look now this is how you move it if I change it to 2, the whole pro progress starts here and this is how to move it. This is like basic DMX uh, knowledge. Maybe just have a look at like basic DMX controlling and stuff like that. Because that's pretty important for the whole mod to, to understand the whole mod. Yes. I think we covered up all the basic stuff. We covered up the different types of items we covered up how to set them up we covered up how to control them and now you probably ask yourself well how did he do the stuff at the beginning of the video well long story short this stuff that you saw at the beginning of the video is actually used i actually used a light software at the beginning of the video i used the software called dot 2 it looks like this or if you focus on this, it looks like this. So um, I will come to this in a second. Let's just show you what you can do with the mod. Um, in this situation, I completely leave Minecraft for a second. As you can see, I'm not pressing anything. And I'm going into the software. And I can quickly activate one queue, for example, this. And it automatically changes the scene within Minecraft. This is pretty insane to be honest. So you can use the software to control the lights in game. Yeah, before we start with this, let me just sum this thing up for you. At this point, you should know the basics of theatrical mod. You should know how to use all the items by itself in game without any additional software. And you should also know how to control the lights, turn them on and off, if not, Please write it down in the comments. I can pretty much answer anything. Let's just go one step further and go into the advanced controlling via ARTNET. ARTNET is a communication protocol for transmitting DMX signals. DMX, if you remember, I just talked about that. So ARTNET is a way to control your lights with your computer. What do you need? Basically, you need a light software that has ARTNET output. I know that the developer Rushmeet uh, used Magic Q. It's a pretty good software, um, but I'm not a huge fan of the Kemsys products and stuff like that. So I prefer to use the software of Emma Lighting just because of personal preferences and stuff like that. So they have a pretty nice light software that is called Dot2 on PC, which is basically the PC version of a very expensive little light controller. It looks difficulty, but trust me, it's way easier than the big light controllers by MA Lighting. <laughs> so yeah, since this is a theatrical tutorial and not a dot two tutorial, um, I will only showcase what you can do with the software, like the basic stuff, because yeah, you can use any software. It's not necessary to use dot two, and I don't want this tutorial to be like you need to dot use dot two on PC to to use this mod. You can use any software you want that can 
control DMX lights with Artnet. I have made an extra video on how to connect Dot 2 to your Minecraft world for this mod. And I also explained how to do some sort of basic setup. It's still only for the beginner stuff because there are many videos about the Dot 2 software online and I'm not a professional light engineer or operator. This software is not engineered or developed for Minecraft. It's for real shows. So yeah, keep that in mind. So yeah, let's step right into the software to cover the basics. To connect the whole light system to the ArtNet, you actually need to be sure that your ArtNet interface, very important to know, is that you connect this to the software. <clears throat> in my case, it was pretty important that I started Dot 2 in administrator mode, because if I just boot the software normally, it won't work. I go to setup, to network interface, change it to Ethernet, and I make sure that I'm in a session like start new session and then I go to network protocols. Normally it's deactivated, but you can activate it by clicking on it. And here you can see the current address. Yesterday it was 0000, 000, 000 for me. Now it's 2.168.178.93. I don't know why. So make sure that the artnet IP is the same in Minecraft, as you can see here. If I change the address to something else, just change one value and it won't work anymore. So it's very important that you cover up the right IP address in the ArtNet interface. As you can see, we have this basic setup that I created for the tutorial over here. Um, I will zoom in on dot two in a second. I will just show you some basic things that you can do. Um, first of all, let me just turn off the lights like this. And um, here we have like three outputs that are from a soccer packs distro um, or from a dimmer rack for the different static generic lights in this showcase room, as you can see. Then I can turn on and off a few of them separately. I could also mark all of them and make some sort of nice dimmer effect so they turn on and off. I can also do a hard dimmer effect if I want to, but yeah. Um, and we also have six moving ads actually in this test area. I can also change the dimmer value of them. Let me just give it a color, for example, green. Yeah, you have like dimmer, position, color and focus. And I can change the dimmer value. I can change the position, move it in our direction as you can see, or move it around. And um, you can switch the color however you want it to be. You can change the focus, which is very cool. And that's basically all the things you need to know. You can also do like some sort of effects. Let me just switch on to dot two. It's a little bit easier for you to understand. As, I, as you can see, dimmer, position, color, and focus. Dimmer, do some dimmer effects. Yes, that's it for the dimmer effect. Stop it. You can uh, do some circle effects like this. It, it really depends on the speed and on the size that it looks fluent because it's still Minecraft. It's still not a professional light software. So uh, yeah, it looks sometimes a little bit crappy, but I think you get uh, the idea. Um, we have color that you can see here. I can change to RGB and to a nice rainbow effect also have an effect that the focus turns on and off. So now you can see it, the focus goes on and off. That's basically what you can do with the software. Um, as I said, there is a separate video on Dot 2 because I don't want to cover too much up in this video. Um, let's go to the actual showcase room that I showed you in the, in the opening. This section over here, we have like the overview of all the moving lights that I'm using here. As you can see right here. Yeah, there are a lot of moving lights in this scene. We have the moving lights in the background. And the cool thing is that I can actually use my MIDI pad to control this. So what you just saw was not made with the help of, of me pressing on the buttons. As you can see, I'm in Minecraft and I simultaneously changing the color of the scene with my MIDI pad since it's connected to Dot 2, which is pretty amazing. So you can walk around in your show. You could even if you like go on full on madness, you could act like like whatever and, and 
the lights will automatically do whatever you press on the button or change the focus manually. Let me go to, to this section. So in that case, you can actually see what I'm doing. So you can see the fader that I'm moving down and up to uh, change the focus or the main lights. It's pretty amazing what you can do with this mod, to be honest. I just I just love this mod. <laughs> I just I simply love the mod. It's it's amazing. And you can do movements and stuff like that. That you can store them, and uh, and that way you can create crazy shows. I think I pretty much told you all the important things. I hope that I didn't forget anything. Let me just think about it. We talked about the basic controlling. We talked about the advanced controlling a little bit. As I said, there is a more detailed video on how to use DOT2. If you want to use DOT2, you can use any other software too. I think that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If I forgot anything, feel free to leave a comment and I can help you. Um, as I said, I'm just a fan of the project. I'm not a contributor or anything, so I am not developing this mod. I can't help you with any bugs. Um, for that, I recommend that you go on the Theatrical Mod Discord. I'm also on the Discord if you want to talk to me. All right, I think that's pretty much it. I know this was quite a long video, actually. So I hope you still <laughs> understood everything. And if you're still interested in the whole Minecraft show topic and Minecraft musicals or event Minecraft stuff like that, um, you can check out this channel if you don't know me. This channel basically covers up all kind of different show stuff, especially Minecraft Lion King. So if you ever want to see the Minecraft version of the, of the Lion King show, you can check it out on my YouTube channel. So that's pretty much it for the actual video. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask me and join the Discord. And yeah, I would say that's it for today. Have a great day, have fun trying around with the mod, and I would say we see us in the next video. Bye bye!